Hi guys. <laughs> okay, this is uh, take two on this video. All right, so lots of people have, well, maybe not lots, but a few people have asked how to do the buttonholes. I did some buttonhole or some uh, button closures on some journals recently, and <clears throat> I used the buttonhole attachment, the buttonhole foot on my sewing machine to make them, uh, to make the buttonholes, and obviously. <laughs> anyway, so a few people have asked me about that. And uh, so I thought, you know, we get these machines and they've got just tons of attachments and stuff, you know, and that's one of their selling points is that, you know, you get all these attachments and all these stitches and that kind of stuff. And for the most part, uh, for like junk journaling, a lot of us just use like maybe a couple of the decorative stitches and like a zigzag, you know, and obviously a straight stitch. So I thought it would be kind of cool if we sort of learn together how to use a lot of those other attachments and those different feet that come with your machine. And uh, I'm not a sewing expert. I am absolutely not. But I'm pretty good at following directions. And um, so hopefully I can help you like figure out how to use this and start making buttonholes. So it's kind of a cool way to do a closure on a journal. So anyway, so basically this is, uh, well, I'm using the machine that I have is, and I, this is just for sewing paper. Um, I, I mean, for my junk journals. Okay. So yeah, I do sew a lot of fabric on it, but it's not for like making clothing or whatever. Anyway, so this is the CS6000i and, um, it's got like 60 stitches and, um, it's got the you know, the button on the front here to make it go. And I've just got it threaded with black thread top and bottom. So anyways, first thing you need to do is take off the foot that's on the machine. And to do that, there's this little black lever at the back. And all you have to do is just push that and the foot drops off. Okay. So if the foot ever comes off on your machine and you don't know why, um, <laughs> just push that and you know, put the foot back on. It's this little lever right there. So, all right. So then one thing that's kind of cool about this is that you can determine the size of your buttonhole based on the actual button, right? So there's a little slide right here at the end of it. And it goes up to probably about an inch um, so basically to make sure that your buttonhole is the right size for your button, you just take the button, put it on there and then close this up and then it locks the button in place. So that's how it measures how far to, to go. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> so to get the foot attached, we're just going to. I like to take it from the back. It's just easier. And this lever for the, um, the, um, presser foot, if you push that up a little bit more, it actually raises that bar up pretty far. So I don't know what the correct terminology is for these pieces of equipment, but it raises that up farther than it normally goes. So then you just take this, there's a little, there's a little bar right here, a little metal bar that's in between these two pieces of plastic. And um, so that will actually clip on to that little, inside that little notch that's on the bottom of, of the that bar, okay? So then it's attached. And, uh, you know, it's kind of floppy like that, but that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. So then... The way that you get this to measure and to stop and start and, you know, go where it's supposed to go is there's this other little lever right here that kind of pulls down and it actually has the buttonhole like picture on it. And so that you want to take and pull it all the way down. It, you know, sometimes it's a little bit sticky or it seems like it shouldn't be coming down, but you, you need to pull it all the way down and then position it behind that little plastic little, you know, tab, okay? So it has to go behind that. 
So that's how you're gonna determine the size of the buttonhole. You'll see what I mean when it when it starts going. Um, so then you want to select which stitch you want to use. You can use any of the buttonhole stitches. This one happens to start at number 29 and goes all the way through 35. And those are uh, just different patterns of uh, and different stitches that the machine will do to make your buttonhole. So I'm using number 30 just because it's the most basic. Um, and it makes a nice little like try or not, little rectangular, just real clean buttonhole. Okay, so I'm just going to set that up to number third, number 30. And you'll notice if you don't pull this lever down, then the machine will give you an error message and it won't work. So if if you're trying to do this and your machine is going, uh, uh, nope, don't forget that lever. That's what tells the machine, okay, it's in buttonhole mode. So, all right, so then we want to put a buttonhole at the end of this piece of fabric because this is gonna, I'm gonna have a button right here and I'm gonna sew the button on right there and I want it to go through the buttonhole here. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna mark that somehow, either with a pin or whatever. And so you would take your button and lay it on top of the fabric. Let me use another button just for an example. Yeah, okay, we'll use this yellow one. So I want my buttonhole right here. So I wanna take my button and just set it on there. And then you can use like a pin. Oh, can you guys see that? No. Um, so you want to use like a pin or you can make a little tiny mark with a pencil or something like that to indicate the positioning of the button. Okay, so I'm just going to use a little pencil. Okay, and that's going to get covered up. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, so then that little line is where you want to you want to position that just under there's a hole in the top of this right so the needle can go through and there's these little lines in there so you want to line that line up with the red marks on both sides of the foot okay and then lower the foot you want to make sure it's you know straight and then basically the machine does all the work you know um it just you might want to i'm going to slow it down just a little bit And as far as the thread, I don't bother, you know, threading it through. You can just leave it. So it just makes the buttonhole for you. And see how it stops? It stops based on that lever. When it when it had initially, you know, started going, it it stopped because that lever was triggered. So, and then as soon as you lift the presser foot, that resets. So if you have a whole bunch of them that you want to do, um, it remembers that. And then as far as, you know, as far as cutting that open, I just use an X-Acto blade and, uh, and just, you know, put it on my cutting mat and just, you know, slice it carefully open. Um, you can also use a, a seam ripper in the instructions. They tell you to use a seam ripper, but um, an X-Acto works pretty well. So, yeah, so that's how you do a buttonhole using that buttonhole attachment. Kind of cool. Yeah, so, and you can do pretty small ones and up to, you know, about an inch using that measuring system there. Um, there are ways that you can make larger buttonholes. Um We'll cross that bridge another day, I guess. Anyways, hope that helps you guys. Take care. Love you. Bye for now.